Welcome to this webinar on non-program food revenue and completing the extended tool for the non-program food revenue. There are two tools available to complete for non-program food revenue. One is the extended tool and the other is the five-day tool. We have a separate webinar on the five-day tool, so if you're interested in that, check out that separate webinar. So we'll begin talking about non-program food revenue. And to begin that, we'll go first go over what is non-program food. So non-program food is food other than a reimbursable meal that is sold and it is purchased with funds from the nonprofit food service account. So some examples of non-program food are adult meals, extra milk, a la carte items, and other food items such as vending machines, school stores, fundraisers, catering, and vended meals. Now oftentimes the vending machines are not operated by the food service department and school stores are not operated by the food service department. They're operated maybe by another department like the student council or somebody else. So in those cases, if the food is not purchased from the food service account, we do not consider it non-program food. If the food is sold during the school day, it still has to meet smart snack standards, but we don't worry about the financial aspect for non-program food revenue unless the food is purchased with the food service account. The non-program food revenue tool is required to be completed annually, and it demonstrates that your revenue from sale of non-program foods generates at least the same proportion of revenues as they contribute to the LEA's food costs. So that basically means that you aren't using program money, so the federal reimbursement and the student's payments to subsidize, to subsidize your non-program food sales or to subsidize your a la carte sales or adult meal sales. So the requirement is that the ratio of non-program food revenue to total revenue is greater than the ratio of non-program food cost to total food cost. So if of our total food costs, 25% is coming from non-program food, then we need to price our non-program food so that at least 25% of our revenue is coming from non-program food. And you don't have to worry too much about this ratio. I know it's pretty complicated, but the non-program food revenue tool calculates this ratio for you and then lets you know if you're in compliance with the ratio or if you're not, if you need to increase your a la carte or non-program prices or transfer non-federal funds to make up the difference. To complete the non-program food revenue tool, you need to use a period of at least five consecutive days. If you have data for a longer period of time, such as monthly or annually, we encourage you to use that. The longer the period of time, the more accurate a picture it is of what is actually going on at your district. But you must select at least five consecutive days to complete the tool. You must choose days that are typical of your food service, so don't include holidays or summer school or special circumstances. If you are completing a tool for five day reference period, then it is optional to include catering or purchasing for other entities in the tool. In that case, for catering or purchasing for other entities, you would just need to show that you are recovering the costs. So now we'll talk about completing the extended period tool. Again, we have two tools available, the extended period and the five-day tool, and we have a separate webinar on the five-day tool. For the extended tool, this is what it looks like. There is just one tab on an Excel file, and that's all it is. And there are just four pieces of information that you need for this extended tool. The first is to that you'll enter the food cost of reimbursable meals. So the, only the food cost, don't include labor, don't include supplies, just the food cost only for your reimbursable lunches, breakfasts, reimbursable snacks, and if you're getting special milk reimbursed. 
Next, you'll enter the cost of your non-program food for that same reference period. So this includes co food costs for adult meals, a la carte, extra entrees, extra milks, any snack milks that are not being reimbursed. If the food service department operates any vending machines, vended meals sold to other agencies, or other foods for which the LEA it does not receive reimbursement, you would enter it here. A common mistake is not to include the adult meals in this cost of non-program food because when you're purchasing your food, you usually just purchase the food for the students and the adults all at once. You're not separating out, okay, this is what I'm purchasing for adults and this is what I'm purchasing for students. And so because of how you're purchasing, it's often easy to put that adult meal cost in the wrong place, to put it with the reimbursable meal food when really it needs to be in the cost of the non-program food. If you're not able to separate that out, then I would recommend using the five-day tool instead of this extended tool. The next piece of information is the revenue from non-program food. So this is any year revenue you're bringing in for those adult meals, the extra milks, the extra entrees, and so on. Make sure you're not using the financial report for this number. On our financial report, it's a, a different definition of what non-program is, and it's pulling in different numbers, so those don't, um, those don't match up with what is needed in this tool. Then the last piece of information you need is the total revenue. So this includes total non-program food revenue as well as your total revenue for program food. So the revenue you're getting for reimbursable meals, so that was federal reimbursements, and the student payments. You'll add that together with the non-program revenue for this box. Then this last line here, the additional revenue needed to comply is the results of the tool. If there is a number here, it means you need to increase the prices of your non-program food or you need to transfer non-federal funds into the food service account in order to comply. If there isn't a number here, that means your non-program foods are priced sufficiently. So now let's go through an example of the extended period tool. In this example, we have um, an example district here. Over here we have the cost, so our total food cost, our a la carte cost, and our cost of adult meals. And then we have our revenues, so our adult meal revenue, a la carte revenue, federal reimbursement, and the revenue from student payments. The first thing we need to enter is the cost for reimbursable food. So our costs are over here. Our total food cost is $400,000, but our total food cost includes our non-program food. So to get the cost of our reimbursable meal food, we'll have to subtract off this non-program food from the total food cost. So we take $400,000 minus the a la carte food cost minus the adult meal food cost to get $370,000 for our reimbursable meal food cost. The next line here is where we enter the cost of our non-program food. So our non-program food in this district is a la carte and adult meals. So we'll add those together to get the cost of our non-program food. So $20,000 plus $10,000 is $30,000 that goes in this box here. The next piece of information is the total non-program food revenue. So over here we have our revenues and we're looking for our non-program food revenue. So adult meals and a la carte are our non-program foods in this district. So we'll add those together to get our non-program food revenue. So $15,000 plus $40,000 is $55,000. And then the last box is our total revenue. So we add our non-program revenue and our program revenue. So all our revenue here added together. So we have 15,000 for adult meals 
40,000 for a la carte, 300,000 in the federal reimbursement, and 100,000 in student payments equals 455,000, and that's what we'll enter into this box here. Then the rest of these numbers will calculate for us and our results will show up here in this last line, additional revenue needed to comply. In this example, there is no additional revenue needed to comply, so that means our non-program food is priced sufficiently. If there is a number here, then you would need to increase your revenue from non-program foods, so increase the a la carte or adult meal prices. Either that or you would have to use non-federal funds and transfer non-federal funds into the food service account. Just keep in mind when you do this, this is for whatever reference period you used. So if you filled out this tool for one year, then this amount would be the amount to transfer for the entire year. If you filled out the tool for five days, then you would need to multiply that out by how many days you have in the school year to know how much money to transfer for the entire year. So that completes the webinar on completing the extended non-program food revenue tool. If you want to check out the five-day tool webinar, that is also available. Thank you.